Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow. Today we're going to be checking out an item which we've had so many comments about asking us to check out. This is the Xbox Elite controller. Let's do this. Kicking off the long list of killer features, we've got the interchangeable thumbsticks. Now these are really, really, really easy to change using a magnetic mechanism. The first set is an original Xbox recessed grippy type thumbstick, which I personally like the feel of the most. And then you've got a more PlayStation-esque style dome stick. And then last but not least, you've got some tall thumbsticks, supposedly for enhanced accuracy. They may feel weird as they look so tall, but these are actually my favourite type of thumbstick. These really help more than you'd think with precision and accuracy in FPS games, and they're helping me with my awesome free-for-all streak in Black Ops 3. But saying that, because they are a little bit taller, it makes it a little bit harder to press the other buttons on the controller. Bring in the Elite Controller's second awesome feature, the four programmable buttons on the back. You can customise what the buttons do in the Xbox application. More on that later, but let's focus about these programmable buttons right now. It simply asks you to press the paddle you want to program, then press the button you want to program it to, and then that's it. It's really intuitive to use. I personally only have the top two programmable buttons installed on my controller, as you can just take them off as you please. I find that the bottom ones get in the way and they made me misclick when something really horrible happened in the game and I would grip my controller. Again, if you really don't like them, just take them off and store them in the awesome little carrying case provided with slots for all the accessories and the controller. Just above the programmable triggers, there's two little hardware switches. These are called trigger stops, and again, they're great for FPS games. Pretty much what they do is they stop the amount of travel needed to register a hit on the two back triggers. So technically, you don't have to press the trigger down as hard to register a hit. As you can see, this controller is putting out a lot of unfair advantages if it was in a versus match between a normal controller. Then we have the D-pad, and I haven't really had a chance to excessively test this thing yet but one of the ones you get is a circle dish type d-pad i felt this was really strange in many ways but it also cut down the amount of misclicks i encountered whilst changing guns in gears of war this style however would be absolutely awesome if you were to say play a fighting game being able to keep your finger pressed on the d-pad a full 360 degrees around it is just a game-changing feature. But if this D-pad really doesn't float your goat, then they've also included a normal D-pad, which you can again put on if you really don't like the dish style D-pad. I personally think it looks really cool. Other than that, there's the looks. And this is a personal thing, but I think it looks gorgeous. I love how the A, X, Y, and B buttons are black, and I also love the gray accenting triggers on the top of the controller. There's also included a 3.5mm headphone jack for those of you who, well, pretty much everyone who has a normal set of headphones and wants to listen to their Xbox through the controller, you can do it now with a 3.5mm jack. The software is available for PC and Xbox, and in there you can create two user settings that can be quickly changed between the little button in the middle of the controller. In the software, you can map any button to pretty much any other button. You can also change the brightness of the LED on the controller, pretty pointless in my opinion. And you can also change the sensitivity of the thumbsticks and the triggers to suit your style of play. And there's also presets for other styles of games, so you can change them on the fly. But stop! Stop! Double A batteries! Du this thing takes double A batteries! Now I know some of you may be saying, yeah, double A batteries are awesome because if the battery dies you can just put two double A batteries in and you can still have a wireless controller, you don't have to plug it in and wait for it to charge while you're still playing. Yeah, I get that, but this controller isn't cheap. It should come with double A batteries and a plug and play recharge kit. I shouldn't have to be spending extra money on this stuff. But don't get me wrong, I do like that you have the option to have AA batteries if you want, or buy a plug and recharge kit, but it would just be really, really cool if they included it in the box. Right, now, here we go, the price. It's not cheap. If someone came to me and said, Alex, 
I've spent 120 big ones on an Xbox controller, and I'd probably think they were slightly mental. But then again, I was in the shop and I bought it, so technically I'm the mental one. But I put two and two together. Custom controllers with these sorts of features have been around for ages. Take a look at scuff controllers. 120 big ones is about the same as a medium kitted out scuff controller. We're not even talking about an expert scuff controller, just a medium kitted out one. The thing is, if you want these features, you have to spend the money. There's no other cheaper alternative. So yes, it goes without saying, this thing is an expensive controller but it's one of the nicest feeling controllers I've ever held. It's one of the nicest controllers I've ever used. It has some absolutely killer features. It comes with a carrying case, if that's your thing, and it's just gorgeous. If you're passionate about your gaming and you really want these features, I would wholeheartedly recommend this controller. But if you're just a casual gamer and these features really don't appeal to you, then there's no point. But also, don't hate on people that buy this controller. If they want to spend the money on it, let them spend the money on it. So, other than that, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hopefully it has taught you something uh, if you haven't learnt it about the new Xbox Elite controller. I'll drop links down in the description if you want to pick one up or check out pricing and availability. But for now, my name's been Alex, you guys have been awesome. Be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.